The New York Islanders come up short, losing game one, two to one to the Carolina Hurricanes. We have our key takeaways, why the Islanders fell short and why it's way too soon to panic. All that and a lot more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Tuesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to thank everyone for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. We have got a lot to discuss after a disappointing but not surprising game one between the Islanders and the Carolina Hurricanes. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question for us, maybe a, a comment about something we said on the show, or maybe you've got uh, something you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, feel free to send us an email, the email address Locked on Islanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Isles. And you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, NYR VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings. And uh, I, I am going to be live tweeting during every Islanders home and road playoff game. So join me during the game for instant insight and analysis. And it's always great to interact with Islanders fans, whether it's game time or any time. So please do reach out and let's talk a little Islanders hockey. Disappointing game one, but not unexpected. And if this game one is any indication, we are in for a long, close, intense series. And I think the tone in this game was set almost immediately. And Ryan Pollock delivering a, a big hit in the first, what was it, 20, 30 seconds of the game. And there was no looking back, really, from that point. We knew what we were going to get the rest of the way. And, oh boy, did did we ever get it? And I, I think, I can't say this was an unexpected result. I can't say that this team didn't play well. I, I think they got off to a little bit of a slow start in the first four or five minutes. But after that, they did, for the most part, play Islanders hockey. And look, this is the playoffs. There are no easy games from here on in. There are no, you're not playing a game against a team that is, you know, 15, 20 games under NHL 500. You are playing the team that won your division with 113 points, uh, you know, so 20 points better than the Islanders were over the course of the regular season. And it is you're playing on the road. I, I, I can talk about all of that, but most important thing that ended up costing the Islanders, and it's something that's been an issue all year, and that was special teams. The Islanders and Carolina Hurricanes each had four power play opportunities in this game. And we'll get to the officiating later on in the show. We'll talk about it. But each team had four power play chances. And Carolina cashed in on two of theirs. And the Islanders did not cash in on any. When you give up two power play goals and don't score any power play goals in a low scoring, tight checking game between two defense first teams, it is hard to win. And realistically, it was special teams 
that cost the Islanders the game. Now, you know, we talk in our preview with Jared Ellis of Locked On Hurricanes, which uh, was our Monday show. We talked about how, you know, the Hurricanes power play was struggling as of late. It certainly didn't look that way against the Islanders scoring. I believe it was on their first two power play chances. But the Islanders' penalty kill has sort of been the the better part of their special teams effort. It wasn't there early on in this game. Now, on the flip side, the Islanders' power play, while it didn't score, especially on their first two power play, well, their first and third power play, they showed some signs of life. They moved the puck better. They got shots. That first power play, they were actually getting quality scoring chances. Now, they didn't finish, which is something that has bothered the Islanders all year long, but at least they were moving the puck. They were setting each other up. They were making life difficult for the penalty killers. So that is certainly a positive that we can take away from this game. Now, you know, as far as the penalty kill was concerned, that first goal was quite simply a lack of communication. And they did something that you just cannot do. We know that the Carolina Hurricanes right now are missing two of their better offensive players in Andre Svechnikov and Max Pacioretty. Now, Pacioretty's been out a good portion of the season, but Svechnikov is a big loss. And so who is their most dangerous player offensively? I mean, it, it, it isn't even close if you think about it. We know it's their Sebastian Ajo. And who did the Islanders leave all alone on the power play to get a wide open goal on a one-timer that opened up the scoring? Sebastian Ajo. First of all, you can't leave anybody unattended at the circle to take that kind of a shot, power play or no power play. That's not where the open man can be. And to give, give up a goal that soon off the faceoff, which that first goal was, shows me that there was just, you know, a lack of communication. And, you know, two players went in a different direction, left Ajo all alone, and he took full advantage of the opportunity. Can't say I blame Sorokin, who played exceptionally well and kept the Islanders in this game by making 35 saves and 37 shots. Can't blame Sorokin. Not at all. And as far as the the, the second goal was concerned, uh, and that was the goal by, uh, by uh, Nosen, uh, Nessen, Again, first of all, Brent Burns, great player, and we talked about him when we previewed the series. He set up both goals, primary assists on both goals. But uh, again, that other power play goal, just a deflection in front, not a lot you could do. It was redirected in front. It was a 50-50 battle in front, and the Hurricanes player won that 50-50 battle. Now, the only goal that the Islanders were able to score was kind of fluky. It was Ryan Polak uh, who kind of fanned on a shot. It went off the heel of a stick and that kind of surprised or got Antti Ranta off of his game. And look, I was a little surprised Ranta got the start. Everyone was expecting Frederick Anderson to be the goalie. They got Ranta. Ranta, to his credit, played well, but the Islanders needed to test him a little bit more before the last few minutes of this game. So a disappointing loss for the New York Islanders and special teams letting the Islanders down. But, it, you know, I was more disappointed in the penalty kill and the two goals they gave up than I was in the power play because at least on two of the four power play chances, they were creating. We've got lots more to discuss about this game. We'll talk about our unsung hero and go to the game. And we, we will talk about the officiating because obviously there were a lot of questions and complaints about that. But also, you know, we are going to explain why 
this game tells me that there's some a lot of good things we could take about this game as far as the way this series is going to go. So all that's still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Grand Slams. No hitters and double plays are back. Yes, baseball season is here, and there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. And yeah, you can use your knowledge of the Yankees or Mets. Check out the odds there. Or how about game two, Wednesday night, Islanders and Hurricanes. Check out the odds at FanDuel. So don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. So let's talk a little bit about the officiating, okay, shall we? Because the first penalty on fashing, yeah, okay, it was a little iffy, but two two penalties to me stood out as ridiculous out of the four. The one that hurt the most was the Ryan Pollock slashing call that led directly to the second Carolina goal. And that was just not a penalty. (laughs) I'm sorry. You can watch that replay. You can get technical. You could, you could talk about, you know, you can make a ticky tack call where, okay, yeah, technically that's a penalty, but no one would normally call it. No, no, no. This just wasn't a penalty. And it was a great defensive play. I don't know how the, the Hurricanes didn't score on that scoring attempt, but Ryan Pollock made a great play to prevent that opportunity. And, you know, the, the puck hit the post, but it was just a very, very questionable call on that penalty. And then the other one was the Brock Nelson roughing call. I thought that Kat Kaniemi embellished it uh, more than a little bit, but you know what, if you if you want to get technical, Matthew Barzal did more than a little bit to point out the slashing call against Brent Burns in the last five minutes of the game that gave the Islanders their last power play chance. And you know what, that power play was the worst uh, by the Islanders because that was the big spot. Five minutes left in the game, you're down by a goal, and they came up with nothing. But look, I want to see a little bit more from some players. Uh, I want to give a little credit to the Islanders and the way they handled uh, certain players handled things. Samuel Bolduc, he had one questionable play, but I think he did a good job overall. Yes, in limited minutes. Uh, I, I, I do need to see a little bit more from Bo Horvat. He did show up a little bit late in the game, but through 40 minutes, he didn't have a shot on goal. He finished with two. Uh, he did win 16 out of 28 face-offs. And I, I want to see from the Islanders maybe a little bit more flow to this game. There were more than 70 face-offs in this hockey game. And There was just, you know, so many whistles and so many delays in this game that uh, you you just want to see a little bit more. Now, the 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 Nelson Engvall Palmieri line, which has been the Islanders' best line down the stretch, they definitely, you know, they were on ice for the only Islanders' goal. But I want to see a little bit more offense from them. Uh, They were not as consistent. And look, credit where credit is due. That's what the Hurricanes do. Now, got to talk about Matthew Barzal. He played 21 minutes and 12 seconds in this game. First game back in literally two months. And I'll be honest, the rust showed at times. He 
skated around as he usually does. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it backfired, but it backfired a little bit more than usual because uh, it, 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 you know, he just doesn't have his timing back. You can't sit two months and practice a little, skate on your own a little and practice or do a morning skate or two and expect to see vintage Matthew Barzal. And we didn't see vintage Matthew Barzal. But you know what? Without vintage Matthew Barzal, the Islanders still only lost by one goal, and they were in it the whole way. And the good news is every game that passes, Matthew Barzal will get better and better and get his timing back and get into shape and hopefully will be able to contribute a little bit more offense. Um, it's going to be one of those really tight, tough series. And I think it's the kind of series this team can still win. And we're going to get to that. Uh, as far as our unsung hero of the game and our goat of the game, the unsung hero to me, it's got to be Ryan Polak. Yeah, he scored the only goal, but I think the Islanders' first star would still have to be Ilya Sorokin. But in addition to the goal, two shots, nine hits for Ryan Polak, two block shots. Runners up, well, uh, I, I got to give a shout out to Matt Martin, who had six hits and only eight and a half minutes of action and a block shot. And Scott Mayfield, who had four blocked shots in this game for the New York Islanders. So, uh, look, shots on goal at the end of the game were certainly, you know, 37-26 in favor of Carolina. Islanders out hit them 44-39. to Block shot 17-16. This was an even hockey game. The Islanders may be a smidge better at times, five on five, but on the power play, they couldn't get it done. The Canes did. The Canes won. Bottom line, uh, not quite enough from the Islanders, but now I think they know what kind of a series they're in for. As for the, the GOAT of the game, I'm going to give it to the officials. I, I really am. And you you know me. If you've, if you've watched this show over the course of, I mean, I've been doing it now for three years, but if you've been listening to or watching this show over the course of this season or any time since I've been doing it, you know I am the last person to talk about officiating, to complain about officiating. But the way that some of those, you know, two of the four penalties against the Islanders, especially the one against Pollock that led to the what turned out to be the game-winning goal, those were just ridiculous calls. And... Look, it, it, it is what it is. You can't complain about it too long. You have to go out there and overcome bad calls. And, and I think, you know, you try to get a makeup call. And believe me, they do give them in this league. But, you know, did the officiating hurt? Yes. But the Islanders, regardless of what the call is, you got to kill off the penalties. The Islanders didn't do it. It cost them the game. And uh, it, it's very, very disappointing to say the least. But this series is going to go six or seven games. I predicted it would go seven. I'm not backing off from that. I think this Islanders team is going to be in just about every one of these games. And this one is going to go down to the wire. We'll talk a little bit more about why. Coming up, plus we've got our Islanders birthday of the day, uh, a very popular former Islander who is still active in this league. So lots more to get to on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by a product I literally use every day, AG1 by Athletic Greens. Maybe you're like me, you want to be healthy and eat well, but it's easier said than done. Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1 every day, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all these things. And 
look, it can be hard and expensive to keep track of all different supplements and vitamins, not to mention it can be tough on your stomach. Well, AG1 costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Right now, you can reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com slash NHL network, athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So uh, a little bit of news before this game even started, and I did want to just sort of touch on it. The uh, Islanders made a, a roster move. And I, I guess it is one of those situations where the Islanders uh, are doing what a lot of NHL teams are doing, and that is calling up a third goalie. So uh, surprised to me that, you know, well, here, here's the thing, uh, and, and I think it kind of makes sense if you look at it. The Islanders called up Jakob Skarik. They did not call up Corey Schneider, the veteran. Why does that make sense? Because they'll get to see him in practice. And because both Varlamov and Sorokin are healthy and ready to play. If there was an injury, it would make sense to recall uh, Schneider with the chance that he may have to play. But Skarik, he, he didn't do well this year in Bridgeport. And we'll talk more about that on tomorrow's show. But he didn't do well in Bridgeport, and they want to see if maybe he's a candidate to be the backup goalie next year, get a little close-up look at him and practice and see what he can do, and let him have a little experience being on the bench at the NHL playoffs. So from that perspective, it kind of does make sense. And a little bit of a surprise with the way the lineup ended up. Uh, Josh Bailey. Did not dress for this game. Simon Holmstrom did not dress. Jakob Skarik, obviously, Parker Wotherspoon, Ross Johnston. Those are the expected black aces. And then Alexander Romanov. Now, Romanov did, still skating, but did accompany the team on the trip to Raleigh. So is it possible we see him in game two? Maybe. He's there. He's available. It would benefit the Islanders big time to get Alexander Romanov back. And the reason, how about this? Samuel Bolduc played a little less than nine minutes in this game. He played well for the most part. He was a plus one, had two shots, but obviously they are cautious in their use of him. Sebastian Ajo, less than 14 minutes in this game. Understandably, they are cautious about using him at even strength. So you get back Alexander Romanov, you have a fourth defenseman that this team could trust. And, you know, having Adam Pellick and Ryan Polak play more than 23 minutes and having Noah Dobson play more minutes than anyone at 23 minutes and 45 seconds. Dobson still makes me nervous in his own zone. He only had one shot on goal in almost 24 minutes of ice time. I want to see Dobson's ice time reduced a little bit. Pellick and Polak's ice time reduced, maybe a smidge. They could stay in the, in the low to mid 20s. But I, I want to see Alexander Romanov's return would mean a lot to this Islander team in a series like this. Now, why is this series still winnable? Because the Islanders played Islanders hockey. They're playing a team that is in many respects a mirror image of themselves stylistically. A team that's not going to score a lot. That is going to try to shut you down. And they lost by only one goal. And, and both goals were on the power play for Carolina. Every game of this series is likely to be a one or two goal game. And the Islanders just need to steal one game in Carolina to win this series. They came close in game one. If they get Romanov back, there's an even better chance of them getting it done. 
in game two. And the more Barzal gets back into game shape, the more guys like Hudson Fashing, who I love but seemed a little nervous early in the game, took a penalty that led to that first goal. Uh, you know, there are little things that this team needs to do. I liked the way the offense did some things, especially in the third period, but they got to finish. They got to finish. And I, I, my concern about that is that that's a long-term structural thing, talent thing. But you know what? Carolina doesn't do a great job of finishing either. Every game in this series is going to be tight, and the Islanders have every chance to win it. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day, and we're a couple of days late. But Sunday was the 35th birthday of former Islanders winger Kyle Oposo, the native of St. Paul, Minnesota, seventh overall pick in the first round by the Islanders in in 2006, spent a year and a half at the University of Minnesota, made his Islanders debut in 2007-2008, stayed with the Islanders through the 15-16 season, combined with John Tavares and Matt Molson and P.A. Parento, depending on the year, to give the Islanders a, a solid first line, had uh, three 20-plus goal seasons with the Isles, including a career-high 27 in 2013-2014. We go back and look at one of his better games with the Isles, February 7th, 2016 at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Islanders hosting the Edmonton Oilers, and it was the one and only Kyle Oposo with a hat trick and an assist, a four-point night for Kyle Oposo as the Islanders crushed the Edmonton Oilers by a score of eight to one. So uh, we're a little bit late on this, but happy 35th birthday to former Islanders winger and current Buffalo Sabres captain, Kyle Oposo. He is our Islanders birthday of the day. Well, I want to thank everybody for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day or tomorrow on the show, we will preview Game two of this series, we'll talk about some of the things the Islanders need to do better to win game two, and we will also have our weekly farm report, last one of the year, as uh, Bridgeport uh, will take a look at the close out of their season, so make sure you join us for that. Until then, keep the faith, everybody. They're not out of this yet. Have a great day. Stay safe, and of course, let's go Islanders.